Número 2, curso de inglés. Lesson 5, page 2. Illustrated vocabulary. Food. Repeat after me. Steak. Wine. Ice cream. Roast turkey. Fish. Bacon and eggs. Cake, pie, ham, vegetable salad, hamburger and soda, cheese sandwich, bread, lettuce, tomato, and cheese. Lesson 5, page 3. How to make a cake. Henry, please help me. I promised to make a cake tonight. Okay, Alice. It's not difficult. Is there any milk in the house? Yes, there is some. How much? Three quarts. Good. How many eggs are there? There are no eggs in the house. No eggs? And sugar? Is there some sugar? No. There isn't any. Well, is there any flour? Oh, yes, there is some. Two pounds, I think. That's enough. But we have to buy some sugar and eggs. At a restaurant. Are you very hungry? Yes, I am. I want a big steak with baked potatoes. How much is the steak? It's only $5.50. That's cheap. I want a steak, too, but with French fries. Medium or rare, sir? Both well done, please. Now, for dessert, there is ice cream, pie, and fruit salad. But the fruit salad is expensive. Is there any apple pie? Yes, there is some. Good. Please bring two pieces. And to drink... Some beer for me. Oh, no beer for me. A glass of wine, please, and two cups of coffee. Lesson 5, page 5. Weights and measurements. Repeat after me. A loaf of bread. A jar of jam. A bottle of liquor. A box of rice. A carton of milk. A carton 
of ice cream. A can of beer. A pound of flour. Three loaves of bread. A jar of peanut butter. Two bottles of wine. Two boxes of rice. A quart of milk. An ice cream cone. A can of soup. Ten ounces of butter. Lesson five, page six. Shopping at the supermarket. How much orange juice is there at home? About three cartons. How many quarts is that? Three quarts. We need more. Take two quarts, please. We also need ice cream. How much is it here? It's only five dollars a gallon. How much ice cream do we need? Three gallons. I'm sorry. There's too much noise. How many gallons? Three gallons. We also need some vegetables. But there isn't enough money for all that. How much money do you have? Fifteen dollars. I beg your pardon. How many dollars? Fifteen. That's all right. I have more money. Lesson five, page seven. Numbers. Repeat after me. Zero. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. Forty. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. Ninety. One hundred. Twenty-one. Thirty-two. Forty-three. Fifty-four. Sixty-five. Seventy-six. Eighty-seven. Ninety-eight. One hundred. Lesson five, page eight. Pronunciation tips. Repeat after me. Teachers. Watch. Children. China. Charles. French. Catch. Match. The teachers watch the children. Charles is in China. French children speak 
French. Catch this chair. Give me a match. Lesson five, page nine. Something to think about. Lucy, Christmas dinner is tonight, and there isn't any food in the house. We have some fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Are you all right, Lucy? I want something hot. Oh, you want something hot? Well, here's something hot, dear. I'm tired of cleaning and cooking and washing. Tonight we eat out. Eat out on Christmas night. But the prices are ridiculous. Oh, Alfred, picture this: you and I, alone, in a romantic dinner by candlelight. A delicious meal, good wine, and music till one. No dishes to wash. No table to clean, no telephone to answer, and no television to distract us. I love it, but I'm afraid of the price. Weigh this value: twenty-five dollars for the two of us. Twenty-five dollars. Are you sure? Here's the ad in the newspaper. Read all about it. Christmas dinner for two. Coleslaw, applesauce or salad, roast turkey with cranberry sauce, green peas, and baked potatoes. Apple pie, or ice cream, coffee, or tea, and a complimentary bottle of French wine. Live music and dancing, all for twenty-five dollars. Well, hmm, this is something to think about. Lesson six, page four. For some people, work is play, and play is work. Repeat after me. Today is Sunday. It's a beautiful day. The sun is shining. There are no clouds in the sky, and there is no wind in the woods. We are having a picnic in the countryside, and all my friends are having fun. Some of them are playing soccer. Mark is playing for one team, and Roger is playing for the other team. Martha, my little sister, is riding a horse. Well, she's learning how to ride a horse. John is swimming in the lake. He is screaming that the water is cold. 
Susan and Mary are playing chess. They are thinking very hard. They are taking the game very seriously. They both want to win. Because they both hate to lose. George is playing the guitar. He is singing a sad song about a lost love. He writes his own music. There is a group of people around him. They are listening to his words. Now John is teaching Richard how to swim. Richard is afraid of the water. But he wants to learn. Swimming is a good exercise and he loves sports. Some of the boys are chopping wood to make a fire. Some of the girls are busy preparing lunch. It smells delicious. Everyone is here today except Charles. Charles is a little strange. He works seven days a week. He says that his work is his life. That he needs to work to feel alive. He loves his work. And he never takes a break. I think he is married to his job. Of course, he is working today. I guess that for some people, work is play and play is work. swimming pool. Aren't you working today? Oh, are you speaking to me, Alice? No, I'm not working today. I have the day off, and I'm having fun. I am swimming now. What are you doing? I'm going to the athletic field. I want to see the soccer match. What teams are playing today? I don't know, but I prefer soccer to any other sport. Are you coming? Okay, but I'm starving. Let's eat something first. 
That's a good idea. I am hungry too. But restaurants are too expensive. And I think my sister is cooking lunch now. Let's go to my house and eat. Thank you very much. Is your brother home? No, he is working today. That's a pity. He loves soccer. She needs a magician. Hi, Susan. Are you taking a break? Yes, I am. I'm tired. It must be late. Yes, it is. It's ten o'clock. Oh, that's terrible. I still have a lot of work to do. Let me help you. I'm not doing anything tonight. Thank you very much, John. I need help. What work are you doing? Well, I'm not sure it's work. But it sure feels like it. I'm studying for an English test. Great. I can help you then. I'm an expert in English. Don't worry. When are you having the test? Tomorrow morning. Susan, Susan, you never change. You're always leaving things until the last moment. But you say that you're an expert. You can help me. Susie, you don't need an expert. You need a magician. Only someone who can perform miracles can save you now. Lesson six, page eight. Pronunciation tips. Repeat. After me, George, just, judge, orange, change, job, gym, joke, enjoy, subject, ages. Engineer, package, Jane, major, jam, orange juice, vegetables, magician, geographic region, general knowledge. The Middle Ages. Lesson six, page nine. A business project. We want to talk to you, Tom. Something new is coming out. What is it? The recreation center in our neighborhood is going broke. And they're selling it at a really low price. Susan, a group of friends and I are forming a fund to buy the center and reopen it. We want you to participate in this project. I don't know. That recreation center is a real can of worms. The administration is a can of worms, but the facilities are excellent: tennis courts, basketball courts, a fine swimming pool. We're going to make it work. This is our opportunity to strike it rich. How much money is needed? Three thousand dollars each. Look, look, my wife. Isn't interested in dangerous investments. Your wife, your wife. We're asking you, not your wife. Calm down, Peter. 
I'm tired of the same old tune. My wife isn't interested. My wife is sick. My wife is thinking about it. My wife this. My wife that. Three thousand dollars is a lot of money. I have to consult it with my wife. Look, Mark, we're going out on a limb for this project, but it's worth it, and we need you for it. Oh, okay, but don't tell my wife. Speak of the devil. Your wife is coming. <laughs> Night living room basement. Lesson seven, page two. Our home. Listen carefully and repeat after me. Basement. First floor. Second floor. Attic. Bedroom. Bathroom. Living room. Kitchen. Chimney. Roof. Bed. Window. Bathtub. Night table. Table lamp. Fireplace. TV set. Armchair. Sink. Refrigerator. Staircase. Washing machine. Garbage can. Broom. This is a two story house. It has a basement, first floor, second floor, and an attic. How many objects and rooms can you identify? Lesson seven, page four, at the library. At what time are you leaving? I'm leaving at 10 o'clock. Where are you going so early? I'm going to school. Why are you going there? Because I have to study a lot. I have a test Monday morning. But today is Saturday. School is closed. Where are you going to study? I'm going to study at the library. Don't you know that the school library is open on Saturdays? No, it's news to me. And what are you going to study? I'm going to study history. I have to prepare a class. Mary, Steve, and I are going to teach the class Monday. You are going to teach the class? Yes. Our teacher thinks that teaching is the best way to learn. Well, it sounds logical. Good luck, Jane. Thanks, Tom. See you later. Car trouble. Oh, Richard, I have a terrible problem. 
My car isn't working. It isn't? What's the trouble with your car? Who knows? I don't know anything about cars. All I know is that it makes a lot of noise, and it doesn't move. Well, I'm not an expert, but I do know something about cars. Let's check the motor first. How do you open the hood? Oh, that's easy. First press that lever, and then lift the hood. Okay, it's open. Now, let's see what's the trouble. Do you have the car keys? Yes, I do. I'm going to turn on the motor. I want you to hear that awful noise. There it is. Do you hear it? Yes, Patty, I do. But it's not an awful noise. It's the sound of the starter. Your car doesn't make any strange noises. It just doesn't start. Well, why doesn't it? Pat, I don't know how to tell you this, but the sad truth is that your car is out of fuel. Your gas tank is empty. Lesson 7, page 6. At school. Repeat after me. At school, all days are more or less the same. Let me describe a typical day. I arrive at 8.30 in the morning. And I am in class until 10 o'clock. Then we have recess. Before the recess is over, I review the homework from the day before. Because the teacher gives us a short test every day. Usually, the test is easy and no one fails. After the test, it's time for lunch. We bring our lunch in lunch boxes and eat on the playground. After eating lunch, we play with our friends. When the bell rings, it's time to return to class. We have classes until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. At 3 p.m., the bell rings again, and we are free at last. I take the bus home because I live far. But some of my friends walk home. They live near the school. Lesson 7, page 9. The other side of the family. When you marry, you get a whole new group of relatives. They are your in-laws. You then have a mother-in-law, a father-in-law, sisters and brothers-in-law. And, of course, when one of your children marries, you acquire a son or daughter-in-law. The son of your brother or of your sister is your nephew. Their daughter is your niece. You are their uncle 
or ant. That's about all, except for cousins. The children of your aunt and uncle are your cousins. They're your first cousins. Their children are your second cousins. And the grandchildren of your first cousins are your third cousins. In the same manner, your first cousins are the second cousins of your children, and the third cousins of your grandchildren. Of course, your second and third cousins are the third and fourth cousins of your children, and the fifth and sixth cousins of your grandchildren. What a family! Lesson 7, page 10. Pronunciation tips. Repeat after me. Shh. Sharon. Wash. Shirt. She. Short. Share. Ship. Fish. Dish. Shh. Sharon is sleeping. Wash your shirt. She's short. Share your ship. The fish is in the dish. Lesson 7, page 11. Peter and John live in an apartment together. Their apartment is large and sunny. They are good friends and they don't have any problems. Tonight, John is getting ready to go out. He looks very happy and itching to start his night. Peter is curious about what is happening tonight. Stop. Well, John, to see you so happy is spirit lifting. You're hatching something big tonight. What's the matter? You are too curious, my friend. I'm just happy, that's all. After all, I have my health. You're a good friend. I have a good job and a nice apartment. I'm happy because I'm alive. But I can't understand. This morning, you had your health. You had my friendship. You had your job and this apartment. But you were blowing off steam. Something happened. What is it? Nothing, I tell you. Nothing at all. Okay. Okay. You know, of course, that Mary called this afternoon. She asked me to leave you a note, and I put it on your desk. Mary called? My God, that means she can't go out tonight. Oh, what am I going to do? Ah, the secret is out. Don't worry. I made up that story to see if your reaction confirmed my suspicions. You see, I am a very intelligent man. No one can have secrets around me. My powerful intellect helps me find the truth in all cases. Oh, Peter, stop blowing your horn. You're going to make me angry. Now you have to promise that you are going to be silent about this. You can cause me problems if you tell Sandra about this. Be careful. Don't worry. It's our secret now. Lesson 8, P. 
page three. John works in a store, doesn't he? Yes, he does. It's a big store. It, it has many departments. He's on the third floor. He sells footwear. Why does he do that? Because he likes to. And because he has to earn a living. They pay very well. Where is the store? It's at Fifth and Vine Streets. Annabelle works there, too. She keeps the books for the hardware department. It's on the first floor. I didn't know that. At what time does she start work? At 8 o'clock every morning. That's when John starts, too. But John works on the third floor. She probably doesn't see him often. But she always eats in the cafeteria. He probably eats there, too. Yes, he does. He eats at one o'clock. She tells me the food is often very good. She eats at twelve o'clock. He tells me the food is very bad. Either the menu changes every hour on the hour, or they have very different tastes. How come you speak Spanish so well? My mother is Colombian. She speaks it at home with me. When does she speak Spanish with you? All the time. In the morning, at night, during meals. Why does she do that? Because she doesn't want to forget it, and she wants me to learn it, too. And do your brothers and sisters speak it, too? Yes, we all do. You are very lucky. Yes, we are. But we had trouble in Spanish class. Why? Because we speak better Spanish than the teachers. Lesson 8, page 4. Illustrated vocabulary. Occupations. Repeat after me. He is a policeman. He wears a uniform. He fights crime. She is a repairman. She works for the phone company. She's not afraid of heights. He is a gas station attendant. They are carpenters. They make furniture. A photographer taking a picture. He is a mechanic. He fixes machines. He is a barber. He cuts hair. He is a radio announcer. He is reading the news. She is a nurse. She is pushing a patient in a wheelchair. She is a laboratory technician. He is a construction worker. Lesson 8, page 5. What do you do for a living? There are many different kinds of occupations. My father, for example, is a pilot. He flies an airplane for a living. Henry, on the other hand, is not a pilot, but he does work 
on airplanes. He's an airplane mechanic. Many young men like to experiment with the engines of their cars. They are amateur mechanics. They don't fix cars to earn a living. They do it just for fun. Dr. Smith is a professor. He teaches literature at the university. He loves to read. I often see him at the library preparing his lectures. He always looks very serious. Mary is a secretary. She writes letters for her boss and answers the telephone. She is always very busy. She never looks tired. Alfred is a gardener. He is a gardener because he likes plants and enjoys working outdoors. Some people like to sell things. They want to become salesmen. Jim is a salesman for an appliance company. He sells home appliances like washing machines and refrigerators. He usually makes a lot of money. Everybody needs his machines. A priest doesn't sell things. He visits people and he tries to comfort them. He celebrates mass and he preaches a sermon every Sunday morning. He cares about people and tries to counsel them. A policeman lives a life of danger. His job is to keep the law and order. He carries a gun because thieves carry guns. He fights crime. An engineer plans and supervises construction projects. His job is very difficult. It takes many years of study to become an engineer, but no job is more difficult than the job of a doctor. He has the life of his patients in his hands. He never stops studying. What are you? Are you a pilot? A teacher? A fireman? A salesman? Or are you something else? I'm something else. I do a little bit of everything. In other words, I'm a jack of all trades. Sometimes I sell things. At other times I work as a secretary. And then I type letters and answer phones. Once in a while I fix electrical appliances for my neighbors. Once I worked as a radio announcer. As you can see, I do many things for a living, but I seldom preach sermons, not even short ones to my friends. Lesson 8, page 10. Pronunciation tips. Repeat after me. B. Bob. Bye. Boat. Because. Birthday. Husband. But. Big. Beautiful. Bob, buy me a boat, please. A boat? Why? Because today is my birthday, and you're my husband.
But we have a boat, Barbara. Yes, but it isn't a big boat. It isn't a big boat, but it's a beautiful boat. Lesson 8, page 11. A hot idea, a hot solution. Paul, file this report, please. Sure. Hey, Roger, we have a little problem. Mary is leaving the company. Leaving the company? Why? Well, she says she feels all boxed in, in this office. She thinks there is little future for women here. That's silly. We're growing. The company is growing, and she is growing with it. I want to talk to her. Don't spin your wheels. She leaves today. Today? But that's impossible. We need Mary. Only she knows the work in and out. I know, but she's very stubborn. We're cornered, then. We're cornered. What a problem. And there isn't a solution. Well, there is one solution. Oh? What's that? It's just an idea. A hot idea. And it only needs you. Me? Yes, you. Roger, you have to seduce her. What? It's the only way. She likes you very much, you know. In fact, I think she's leaving because you're too cold with her. Paul, I think we better file this conversation.